Hey folks, for this screencast, I'm going to, again, take the last video and add an extra component to it. Um, adding this gravity model kind of, you know, upset me in a little, uh, a little bit just because, you know, in, in, in a way, you can't really see the, the, the projectile do anything. So I'm gonna, in this video, I'm going to make the whole thing two-dimensional. Um, I think we're going to break the heck out of this code. Um, because there's going to be so many things going on, but I think I think in the end it'll it'll be a lot better. Okay, so I'm going to make I'm going to file save as again, right? And I'm going to save this as projectile, and it's going to be 2D now, and then Newtonian gravity. Okay, so um, now now we need to do a lot of stuff. So the inputs to this is going to be x and z, and then the radius is going to be x squared plus z squared. So z is going to be sort of the normal component. Um, along the equator, and then I guess x is going to, actually, we're going to, yeah, we're going to assume that we slice the globe in half, and we're at a circle, and so we're looking at the equator from the north pole, and the z vector is like out the primary, or maybe we should do it the other way around. Sure, so the z coordinate is through the north pole, and the x coordinate is through Africa at the prime meridian, and so we sliced it this way, and so we're looking at the globe from the side, and so Z is up the North Pole, and X is out the equator, okay? So I'm, I'm already anticipating something. I want to make the initial X coordinate the R planet, and then the, uh, the Z coordinate, I'm going to make zero. And then I'm going to make, I guess I'm doing a polar, I, I want to do a polar orbit. And so in order to get a polar orbit, my Z velocity needs to be non-zero. So I'm going to make my Z velocity... I guess 331 for now. Ooh, and I can't do our planet, right? I need to do plus like 600,000 meters above the surface, right? Because I need to be off the surface of the planet to actually go around. Um, and then velocity x, uh, velocity x zero is going to be 0, 0.0. And then my initial conditions are going to be x zero, z zero, and then vel x zero like that, okay? Um, this should all be the same, but when we pull our variables out, this is going to be x out, and then z out is going to be state out of all comma zero, and then I honestly don't really care about altitude anymore. Um, well, let's do this. Let's say, so the altitude is going to be the square root of x out squared plus z out squared minus our planet. That's fine. Let's plot. Let's go ahead and plot it. That, this should be a 1, this should be a 2, no, that's going to be velocity x out, and then velocity z out is state out, all comma 3, and then let's say v, vel out is, let's go ahead and take the norm of the velocity, just for kicks, velocity z out squared, okay, and so we're plotting altitude, that's fine, I'm going to plot um, vel out, and then I'm just going to call this, you know, total speed and then I kind of want to see a 2d orbit right so that's going to be the coolest figure right so, so 2d orbit so plt figure plt plot I want x out and z out and then I guess plt dot plot you know what I want I want an x planet and a y planet where um X planet is the R planet times the sine of theta, and then Y planet is R planet times NP cosine of theta. I'm doing a, a parametric equation for a circle. And then theta is lin space um, 0 to 2 pi and 100 data points is fine. And then I'm going to plot this in green should be blue, really. And then I guess when I plot the orbit, I'll do that in red. And then let's go ahead and do a label just so we can understand what. So this is the orbit. And then down here, um, this is the planet. And then I guess we'll need a grid. But this time we'll need a legend. Okay. All right. So hopefully that will work when we get to it. We're, we're way ahead of ourselves, though. So let's go back to the gravity model. Okay, so the radius is this. That looks good. If r is less than r planet, that's good. Here's the problem. We have an Excel X now, 
and an Excel V now. And then you have an Excel X ah, and an Excel V, G times M planet over R cubed times R. And then we return Excel V and X. Now, here's the thing. The acceleration in the X direction is not this. This isn't right. Um, I wonder if we should go back to making this a unit vector. No, but if you make it a unit vector, I think if you just multiply this by x and this by z, I think that works. Because if you're perfectly along z, z and r are the same. So then z and the r will cancel. I think that's it. Let me, let me go back. I bet you my gravity model... Yeah, yeah, you have an X here and a Z here, and you just do over R cubed. Yeah, so this is fine. Um, okay. Let's go back to our derivative routine now, right? So I have here that Z is the altitude of the surface. That's not true anymore. It's the altitude um, from the center of the planet um, along the north pole. And then X is the altitude from center along along equator, like through Africa. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, Z dot is velocity along Z, Z dot is acceleration along Z. And then I'm not gonna write it, but obviously like the X coordinates are the same, so. Um, so x, x is the state is the is the first row this time. So I've I've sort of shifted the whole thing. Um, z is the second one, and then I'm going to have vel x is state of two, and then vel z is state of three. So we still have kinematics. So z dot is still vel z, but now I've got x dot, which is vel x. Okay. Now I have um, a couple things, right? So I've got when I run the gravity model that returns Excel X and Excel Z. So I wonder, can I do this? Like, I don't know. Let's just try it. I've never done that before. That looks really slick. Like if I can run this code and ha or run this function and have it return two variables and then me multiply both of those by mass and then save it to these two variables, that would be pretty slick. Um, can I do that here too? Like I said, this would be pretty slick if I could. Uh, arrow F. Here, you know what? Let's just run it and see if it throws a... Uh, uh, okay, so it, it, it threw an error here because I forgot to pass this function X. Um, oh yeah, down here it's saying, uh, hey buddy, you forgot to run this. So I'm gonna run zero comma R planet. That should be fine. Um, so it looks good, right? So the acceleration along the X is zero, along Z it's 9.86 because I, I'm, I'm assuming it's along the Z axis. And then, uh, yeah, see, it doesn't like this because I'm doing a, oh, I'm putting a minus sign on a tuple. I don't even think I can multiply tuples. So unless, huh, okay, see, here's the cool thing. Well. See, how could I, if I, I'd rather do this in, in, in vector notation, you know what I mean? Like, I'd rather make this an array, okay? Ah, come on, dude. Come on, end. There we go. And then that's an array times this is an array. And then I'm just going to do gravity F. That's an array now. And then arrow is now an array, but I need to make it one. Okay, and then thrust is now an array. So force is an array. So this is dd dot. That's an array, okay? Looks like my battery's low. I've only got 15 minutes, so we gotta wrap this up quick. Okay, so that's dd dot. So the state vector is going to be x dot, z dot, and then it's gonna be dd dot of zero, and then dd dot of one. Now I could probably do like some concatenation of those vectors, but I don't really care. Let's see if this works. 
So let's look at figure one. Oh yeah. So there is my thing. And I'm kind of thinking we should plot the initial condition. You know what I'm saying? So let's plot. So here's the orbit. So I'm going to do um, plt dot plot x out of zero, z out of zero time. And then I'm going to do a green star. Okay. I'm going to run that bad boy. And what do I get? Okay. Yeah. So it's what I feared. So it's not what I feared. Um, but basically I'm 600 kilometers above the surface and I'm not flying fast enough. And I just crash back into the surface. Okay. So that's obviously very lame. Um, so we need to go faster. Okay. Um, we could compute the perfect velocity. And like I said, I'm pretty sure it's the square root of two times G times M planet over X zero, which is the, the, the distance from the center. I think, I think that's it. Okay. Um, it looks like it's, it may be not be two, but I'm kind of curious where this is going. Um, so the, the other thing that we should probably do is compute the period of our orbit. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to make an R zero called the, and, and do the square root of X zero squared and Z zero squared like that. And I'm going to do R zero here. And then the period is, I think it's two times pi times the semi-major axis of your orbit, which I'm assuming is R zero um, times, um, or raised, sorry, to the three halves power. And I'm going to, I'm going to put period in here. Um, that's a Kepler equation that basically tells you like how long an orbit takes. And, uh, let's see if that worked. Um, I don't think it did. Okay. So that's, uh, so that's, so that's not it. So, um, I'm sure I did it in this code. Uh, do, 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 do. there's period. Where do I compute period? 3000. I didn't do it in a fancier way. There we go. Two times pi over the square. Oh, over the square root. Okay. So it's wait. Okay. So it's two. No, that's velocity Z. Sorry. Where, two times pi over the square root of G times M planet times the semi-major axis. Okay, let's try that. Okay, um, so I simulated long enough, but my orbit is hyperbolic, so I'm definitely going too fast. So how do you compute the velocity of a circular orbit? So there's V orbit. Okay, so it's just the square root of um, G times M planet over R. So yeah, so I, I, the two, the two was wrong. So I was going twice as fast as I needed to, but um, but um, I am in circular orbit. Sweet. Um, my velocity, I think this is velocity and it's obviously, um, the same and it's because I'm in a circular orbit and then my altitude is also constant. Now, if I multiplied this by like 1.1%, I should get a elliptic orbit now. Um, so the, 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 um, this period equation uh, assumes you know what the semi-major axis is, but if you have an elliptic orbit, your semi-major axis is now bigger. Um, so we just need to kind of add like a little fudge factor to say like, hey, simulate a little bit longer, so I'm going to multiply that by 1.5. And so what we should see now is we should see a really nice, beautiful elliptic orbit and then we should see our speed um, is um, very high when we're at perigee and then very low when we're at apogee. And then it speeds up again when we get closer. So that's sort of um, Kepler's, I forget which law it is, but it basically says that you're the fastest when you're at perigee, which is the closest to the surface of the planet, and then slowest when you're at apogee. And then our altitude plot should sort of be the inverse of that. That basically says when we're far away, when we're at our apogee, we are our slowest. Okay. Um, I believe I have made the code 2D. Um, I could change this and say, 
hey, you know what? I have an idea. Put me on the surface of the planet and launch me with a little bit of a vertical velocity. Sorry. Um, launch me with a little bit of a vertical velocity. And, you know, can I get to orbit? And uh, it looks like it looks like I can, but uh, but every time I basically crash into the surface. So this is not exactly the best way to get into orbit. And again, that's why we need to start coding in the the 2D um, rocket. Um, we can probably do the thrust model next before we add an aerodynamics. So um, I guess in the next video, we'll do the thrust model. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one.